would you like to introduce yourself to <laughs> to you to the viewers to the viewers well my name is Matria Miranda mm -hmm. and I am the feminine Christ mm -hmm. it's a term I use to explain my identity and my role and purpose here in this incarnation mm. well. excellent <laughs> so when you say you're the feminine Christ what do you mean by that well I mean that uh, I have had an incarnation previously, mm. uh, someone very well known, mm -hmm. right, Jesus, Right. and people have been expecting the return of Jesus, mm. but Jesus is not returning the way he used to look with the beard and sandals, he's returning as a woman, Okay. and that soul is not just Jesus, but it's actually the merging of Jesus with Mary Magdalene. Right. Because we're talking now about energy, we're mm. talking about consciousness, and the consciousness that was in Jesus' soul mm -hmm. at the time of that incarnation, when I departed, and that consciousness was leaving the body, right? It yeah. entered Mary Magdalene. And so she became the first woman with this consciousness, and we could mm. call it the feminine Christ. Now, as Miranda, Maitreya Miranda, I am a merging of these two in a sacred union, sacred marriage. Hmm. I'm here to help people learn about merging and uniting yin and yang within, the feminine hmm. and masculine within. Yeah. So this is something that will need a lot of explanation perhaps, but since you're asking me, that's in broad terms an explanation. Right. So, as opposed to like there are many people out there who would claim to be yes. the reincarnation or to have attained the level of awareness right. in regard to uh, Jesus becoming a living Christ. Yes. Um, but you say instead of it actually being a process where it's simply a question of like being reborn straight away, you're a combination of both the masculine and feminine aspects. Yes. Of that. Yes. Yeah. And when you say that others are also claiming this, it's because mm. Mm. there was in 1996. This is the important year to to mention because when I incarnated here in '65, I was already the reincarnated soul of Jesus. I just didn't remember this. Of course, I was a child. Okay. I was brought up in a Christian family. My father was a Lutheran Christian pastor. Mm -hmm. So we had spirit as the father of the house all the time, mm. and I had my own very specific and personal relationship also with, with spirit okay. on my own. But in 1996, what happened was that spirit, as in what we would call the highest level of divinity, mm. entered this body because I had held it before. The soul that I am had mm. held this high frequency before. And that is what initiated the collective Christ or Buddha, we could also say, mm -hmm. consciousness way, the cosmic consciousness. So it was through me and acts that I performed that it was seeded into the collective consciousness. And since then, everyone who's picking up on this is picking up on their own inner Christ or Buddha, cosmic consciousness identity in a sense, which is why it can become very confusing. So those who've claimed to be... Um claim to be he or it or the Christ right. since that period would be affected by this uh, this change, this shift. Precisely, mm. yes. They would be picking up on that vibration and okay. for a phase perhaps confusing it with who they are regarding their role here, right? But they can mm. still be important teachers, avatars, healers with this consciousness, mm. but they're not the ones who are carrying the role as the awaited world avatar. I'm right. that one because of my training, my entire life and background, the different countries I've lived in, and just being universal. I'm mm. not like, for instance, some in the East who have um, followed a certain tradition, mm. calling themselves Maitreya, right? Mm. They might be good teachers within that tradition, but they're not universal for everyone. Right. You see what I mean? This is very important. This is why I've been incarnated here in in England okay. at the zero meridian right, mm. and where time is measured from and it's to indicate my neutral 
uh, being my hmm. not belonging to any one branch, but being the tree itself. You okay. So, in that context, you describe the religions and traditions of the world as being on the branches of the tree, yes. and you're coming from the trunk. In a sense, you can say that. Of course, I mean, every religion in itself has parts of the whole, and mm. as is beautiful, has a lot of light and love, right? Mm. It's just that a lot of it has been covered up by dogma over the years. Yeah. Has become rigid in its thought forms, and has also started to um, not build bridges between the different ones. So. Okay. Some people following one religion can become very um, exclusive in that, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's not universal anymore. Mm -hmm. So this is my role, is to bridge them and to see that spirit is in every single religion. It doesn't matter which one you choose, mm -hmm. but the, the highest is, of course, recognizing it's within you. It's right. Within. Okay. Well, on that thought, I will uh, turn to some questions. All right. Some questions from the viewers. So um, hopefully this will work out okay mm. um, well here's one this is actually from me so okay. <laughs> I'm my own viewer yes <laughs> um, would you say you're new age would you say I mean, would you Versus describe yourself as being a new ager as opposed to not being a new ager and well we need to know what you mean by that term well I kind of did it in reverse then because I said uh, basically how would you define new age if you define find yourself basically being uh, new age and if not why not so okay so let's look it, at this yes. if it's on a personal level you would define yourself being akin to no, the new age I, movement or um yes and no see that's yes the thing no. i need to explain it because okay um perhaps what you might mean with new age and many viewers might mean is mm. is w what's coming in new for this age okay and of course yes i'm very much a part of that i'm bringing it in <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's coming through me um, and and everybody else's ability to pick up on it from within so mm. yes but I'm also here representing what has been here for all eternity has always been here very very universal truths it's just that they've been like I said they've been twisted or they've been covered up or they've been misinterpreted mm. and so I really want to bring more clarity to the truths that are already here right so it's a combination of merging the old with the new hmm well, that's good to yeah. know um, let me see. Um, the title or name, uh, Maitreya. Yeah. Um, why have you chosen that, or why has that chosen you? You might right. prefer to say. Yeah. Good. Well, um, Maitreya is not the Theosophical Master known under that name. That's not what I, the way I use it. Right. The way I use it, <clears throat> Maitreya means loving kindness, mm -hmm. and it's a title for the awaited fifth Buddha, right. also a general title for the awaited world avatar, mm -hmm. who is known under many names, like the Christ, right, mm. the second coming, or Quetzalcoatl, according to the Mayans, yeah. right, or white buffalo calf woman, expected mm -hmm. to return the Imam Mahdi for the Muslims. So there are many names for the awaited one, mm -hmm. and I use the title Maitreya in front of my name, Miranda, to indicate that I am that one. Right, right. All right. This so, is explained more on my website if you yes, want to look more yes. into it. So if anyone wants to check on the website, they can. Yes. And uh, can, can you remember the website? Um, my just, website? Yep, say it out. Yes, so. it's mirandaweiss.com. Okay. And we may need to spell my last name, W-E-I-S-Z. I'll put that in the description of this video Thank and you. people can go and check that out and yeah. make up their own minds. Thank um, you. I think I'll go on to another question. Yeah. Let me see. I want to add, just since we're talking about oh, that, uh, that Weiss, my name with the SC, is is the Hungarian version of Weiss, Germanic Weiss, which means white. Right. And so that's also indicating my family's divine bloodline. Okay. White. It's pure. Yeah. And when it went into France, it became Claire, which means transparent, right? And mm. then Sinclair, right? Oh, right. So people who like Holy, Holy Grail, Holy, well. you know, the... the uh, da Vinci Code and these kind mm. of books, they'll they'll be able to find out a lot by looking into my website and my bloodline. Right, so I see where you're coming from there, I think. Right. So 
Are you saying, like, with the Da Vinci Code and the idea of this, um, should I say perhaps holy bloodline? Uh, yes. And you would connect yourself to that yes. going back, uh, say, through Europe back to the Middle East? Is that correct? Absolutely. Eventually, you know, you go back far enough and yes. the well, even royalties before interlock? That, because the, the, mm. the, um, again, because I don't want to limit myself only to the Christianity okay. uh, line, mm -hmm. uh, we've got to remember this is universal. So the frequency I'm embody has been here way before that as well. It's mm. been here in an ancient times. Yes. All right. Just this frequency in many, many embodiments. All right. Mm. And another person that's well known in this in this time is Saint Germain. Right? Mm. Mm. You know, with the violet the flame, and and he's assisting me in my uh, emergence. Mm -hmm. And he also had the incarnation as Merlin, helping Arthur. Okay. Right. And he also was known as Master Rakotsi in Hungary. Hmm. And Rakotsi is the son of Ferenc Rakotsi, who was a very important Hungarian uh, king and and, um, and a warlord in a sense. But he also hmm. helped to unite the people. And so this is these are real historic people who have lived. Okay. And he is also of our bloodline. So this hmm. is also something people can check on my website. Okay. Well. That's great. Yeah. Um, there's a question from a person who I've known on YouTube for quite a while, and he calls himself, uh, this is the name of his channel, yeah. uh, Ordo Templi Aurora, and he says, uh, what was her, as in your, uh, what was your uh, life like as an ordinary woman before you became, uh, before you became the Maitreya? Right. Good question. Mm. Um, well, like I said, I grew up in a Christian family mm -hmm. and uh, we moved around a lot because my father is from Hungary, as I just said. Okay. My mother comes from Norway. Mm. They met in England and London and I was born here in Leeds. We moved to America and all of this is part of Spirit's design for training me for this role. Mm. So, like I said, I was born here because it's the zero meridian and it's where I can be neutral. Like right. if you're going to land on a round ball, right? Where are you going to? <laughs> mm. I didn't want to have any preference for one country over another. So this is trying to show my neutral um, love and compassion, if you will, for, for everyone. That's good. So then we moved to America, thanks to um, Minnesota, mm -hmm. also known as the North Star State. Oh. And the star is something also that's followed me my entire life, which is why my book is called Star Avatar. It's the star of spirit, okay? This is neutral, mm -hmm. no gender to it. And in America, we traveled a lot through the Western states, and I was visiting many of the Native American, you know, Indian reservations. Mm -hmm. And that was also spirit's intent for me to pick up early on in my body energies from, from the Americas, basically, because America, not the USA we think of today, but the old part, you know, it's very ancient as well. Yeah. America, Middle America, South America, these belong to what was previously known as Ameruka, the land of the Serpent Master, and we're talking mm. now about Lemuria Mu, like way, way back. Okay. All right, so that was also mm. a purpose for my training. Then we moved to Germany so I could experience Saturn, right? It's a very uh, restrictive kind of country compared to the Americas, which are well, Northern America is much more Jupiterian and, you know, everything's big and, and uh, I really enjoyed my years in America. And Germany became more of a, a limiting time period and, and good training in uh, becoming my own authority in a sense because that's when I asked myself where am I really from and what am I doing here? And I was 10 at the time. And it's also when um, another dimensional part of myself, which is known as Mira or Sanyasa. Hmm. Have you heard of her? Oh, I don't think I have, no. Okay, What's that? well, I had contact with Billy Meyer as Sanyasa in Switzerland in 1975 hmm. and onwards, and that was at the time that my family and I had moved to Germany, so I was closer. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I could go through it all. My book is basically about all of this, but this is the question he's asking. My life has been training for this role since right. I got here. And I also explain a lot about 
my experiences not just on this plane but also in other dimensions you know mm. when in the dream state or in visions when we're leaving our body and we're elsewhere and that's also really important to know because I want to help people to recognize um, that there's way more than just this dimension mm. and it's not just about consciousness it's about actually being able to be in these other states other dimensions as other heavens in a way. Okay. Right? So we could talk more about that too, but this is just to give you a brief idea. Yeah. Um, they, they can check out your yes. videos, they can check out your website and yes. get detail there. Yeah. Um, let me see. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, uh, here's a quote someone uh, asked me to pass on. Um, it's a quote from a film, actually. I'm going to ask you what you think of it before I tell you what the film is about. Okay. Uh, there is an idea, some kind of abstraction, but there is no real me, only an entity, something illusory. And though I can hide uh, my cold gaze, and you can shake my hand and feel my flesh gripping yours, and maybe you can sense our lifestyles are comparable. I am simply not there. Right. What does that make you think? It's a wonderful quote. It's mm. very deep. And I love actually, it brings up something that's on a high level of being. Yeah. Because um, in addition to being, there's mm. also not being. Yeah. <laughs> And I know it sounds weird, but it's it's really true. And I write about this as well. Um, I call it the triplicity of being. Hmm. And it's the way we live and create ourselves all the time. And it's actually a threefold movement. Hmm. It's to be, to not be, to become. Okay. All right. And so this I is whatever is being and becoming right mm. but it's also not being because you lose it again all the time if you create yourself anew all the time then there's no fixed i it's constantly changing so this mm. is you know people come to a stage of the enlightened i mm. but it's still a sense of identity if there's an i yes. when you move beyond the i you move into what i would term the womb or the void which is nothingness which mm. is complete emptiness my head is very empty and I like to joke about being blonde <laughs> right <laughs> but it's true it's a state yeah. where you're also very very relaxed because you don't have a lot of thoughts disturbing your peace okay. your inner peace is always there because it's empty but you have access to all that is right you see and it's there's my sense of self is spirit it's okay. divine there's no I but then again, I can also say in that is all eyes included. Hmm. Do you see what I mean? And this goes for you as well. This goes for all of us. It's just a matter of how far we have recognized our own divinity. Okay. Basically. That's interesting. Uh, the thing here is, uh, well, you mentioned about you know, divinity and alignment and things like this. Yeah. And uh, the idea of I. Well, this particular quote is from a film. Don't take offense to this. No. It's called American Psycho. And it's oh, Christian wow. Bale. Oh. It's a quote from him. Yeah, I like Christian but, Bale. Yeah, he's a great actor, isn't he? He's great, yes. Yeah, and you like the look of him as well. Sure, he's fine, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fine. Yeah, so it's uh, a curious quote. Someone asked yeah. me to get this one and I thought yeah. it might, uh, might open up some interesting areas of thought. And I, I think I'm sure has. if it comes from American Cycle, people are going to probably want to go there. That's a totally different topic. We're talking about the quote <laughs> itself. And of course, I mean, perhaps yeah. some viewers may be interested in, I don't know, trying to ridicule me, trying mm. to tear apart what I'm saying, and they're free to do so. Okay. Naturally, there's, you know, it's free will. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think serious uh, viewers are going to recognize that I'm speaking with authority here because I know what I'm talking about and I'm speaking the truth. Okay. And if they want to ridicule that truth, yeah. it's fine. And, uh, interestingly, there has been a debate yeah. on YouTube about is well people have been using it in general and it's mostly yes. from very very anti-theistic people yes. I, I see myself as more being atheist agnostic but right some people out there are extremely anti-religion anti absolutely anything. i understand and and they would call um like religion a mental illness right and there's been that debate and i, I think it's important to point out that people have a diverse number absolutely. of beliefs absolutely and there are some people 
who are very much uh, anti-religion but still utterly insane. <laughs> so you know, you know, it doesn't really mean just because you believe in different things, right. different ideas, that you're automatically uh, ready to be taken away by the men in white coats. So, no, I mean I would have been taken away a long time ago, right? <laughs> Yeah. It's it's individual look on life, yeah. and they are free to have that. We mm. are not to interfere. And then we can have a conversation like we're having, mm. and some people will recognize what I'm saying and they'll resonate with it, and some of them will think, oh, that's just crazy, or that's not new, and maybe it might not sound new, but that's because what I'm saying has been here all along. I'm just mm. trying to put light to it in a new way, and for our age, how can you live a balanced life the way Jesus was showing? Mm. How can you do this in this modern age? Mm. Right? And I really want people to know it's totally possible and it's not even hard. Mm. It's, it's a matter of finding that balance, like I was speaking about, of the, the feminine and male forces within you because they're, they're complementary. Mm. And an example would be like feminine being uh, going inward, like listening. Okay. Like, like I noticed when we were walking up here, we could walk in silence for a bit, you weren't speaking all the time and I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that you were able to just be silent with me. Mm -hmm. And and the more masculine is to be outward and to speak, right? Yes. So yes. listen and speak is feminine masculine and learning the balance of when to do one and when to do the other. Mm. Or also receiving and giving. Mm. Or also working versus resting. Or being serious versus playful. You see? Mm. And when people find that balance and they can be flexible in in the two, the two opposites, mm. then they find out that life is really easy and effortless and good, good to live. Okay. Uh, several thoughts. Um, firstly, I've, I've come to the, the idea, a conclusion of spirituality. Yeah. Myself, I don't write it off as being an absolute, but right. uh, the interesting idea is um, perhaps spirituality, and indeed it could be said enlightenment to a large degree, is merely the proper balance between emotionality and mentality. Would you say that's it's, fair? I would say that's very fair. Mm. I think it's more, but you're right. Yeah. Because, because what you're saying is actually something I talk a lot about, and I use the words uh, like heart and mind, mm. right? Like, so the emotions would be the heart, yes, and the mind would be uh, the mental body, as you said. Mm. And, and one is cut and the other is sword, mm. and we know these symbols very well, and the key is to be able to use both of these whenever they're required. Like, you mm. use the sword when you need to. Like, now when speaking truth, it's a sword and it's clear. I want to be very clear yes. and bring clarity to things that have become unclear. Mm. And, this, and the cup is that love which is, which is unconditional, which is nurturing, mm. and which is also very joyful. And I think hmm. a lot of the spiritual teachers, they've kind of forgotten about the cup because they, they talk about love, but they do it from mind. Right. And it becomes all about consciousness and they forget the living and the joyfulness and being like children, right? And being mm. happy and... It becomes very repetitive and preachy, doesn't it? It, it can easily yeah. become that, mm. yes. And then they're going to lose their audience. And what I really want to do is find people who are aware of their own... Um, self mm -hmm. they're they're not looking for a teacher to follow i'm not here to be that mm -hmm. but they're looking for someone who's authentic and real who, who's really dedicated to helping them see their own power mm -hmm. and and like you were saying find that balance between emotions and mind. i think uh, at the very least it's a good starting place it's isn't a it, good really? place to start yeah. yes and then you can move on to recognizing all mm -hmm. the superpowers you've got <laughs> fair enough fair enough oh um also thinking as well about the masculine and feminine, yeah. um, these are, although a certain amount is relatively innate within us, it's a naturally existing yeah. paradigm to a degree, yeah. there is a massive like cultural influence, isn't there? Yes, very much mm. so. That's a good point. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm here in female form. Right. Because which you may have known already, it's mm. because we've had 2,000 years now a very, very male-dominated society mm. and uh, and we're not going to lose the male qualities, we're going to bring them into balance with the feminine, but mm. it's important to now honor the feminine more. Oh yes. And one way I like to talk about this is a lot of religions have seen God or the divine as male, right? Mm -hmm. 
and earth as mother earth mm -hmm. feminine and so we're not flipping it around to all of a sudden honoring earth but we're going to merge heaven with mm -hmm. earth and okay. then we move here as human beings as a combination of the two mm -hmm. right as sons and daughters of mother and father not just our father in heaven but our father in heaven and our mother here earth yeah and that's again back to that balance and really starting to enjoy and appreciate what we have all around us and mm. our cohabitants as, as animals and birds and it will really change the world when people start to honor mother as much as father just yeah. to put it I agree <laughs> I found actually I found around here around Glastonbury yeah. I found if you tell an astrologer or you simply suggest to an astrologer about the possibility of the Sun being a motherly or female influence yeah they begin to get a little bit grrr, right because their understanding is oh no that, that's uh, masculine right. and therefore it's a you know it is just it just is yes it becomes more of a religious process rather than going well hang on we live in a solar system yeah. with all these planets it's almost like the mother and her children that's a very in a way. Good, yeah that's <laughs> great know? i haven't thought of it like that yeah thank you that's interesting and what i like to think about in that context is that Often it's been said about Jesus, you know, the the, the sun, right? Mm. Like the uh, not just the sun as in S O N, mm. son of the father, but the sun S U N. Mm. And then, well, what about the daughter? So is the daughter then moon? Why can't the daughter also be sun? Mm. And and Jesus also having moon qualities. It's it's again back to merging sun and moon. Yeah. It's merging sun and moon within, which is then that sacred balance. Mm. And I talk about this in. The way I interpret astrology, um, as in the planets, mm. I would call sun masculine eye and moon feminine eye, but I wouldn't mm. put one lower than the other. Mm. You see what I mean? It's an interesting thing, though, with the mythology, you know, in ancient religions to do with the sun and the moon, because they yeah. appear in the sky as being very similar size. Yeah. They attributed very similar um levels of understanding like masculine feminine yeah. you know the, the powerful burning light in the sky yeah. that, that rings very much of masculine characteristics typically yeah and the uh you know the gentler it, moon <laughs> yeah the almost eerie <laughs> yeah <laughs> presence silvery, of moon. silvery moon yeah mm -hmm. um yeah that's uh, very much of the feminine but if the moon had been say closer or larger then we'd think about it very differently. We'd probably be seeing religions more hinged around the the moon, and we could have just very as likely. easily have had yeah. the the uh, the night father moon yes. or something, you know. Well, well, it's interesting what you said now because mm. in the east, actually, they they see the moon as more prominent. Ah. In Vedic astrology, it's moon based. Ah. you see, and also That's with good. the Mayan calendar, the thirteen moon calendar, they mm -hmm. use the moon, and this is something I also again talk about because. Um, the moon and her cycles are natural mm. and well so is the Sun but this is the way the calendar year is with 12 months yes. that's based on the Sun so it becomes masculine the oh, way yeah. we've seen it it's based but on the Sun and uh, I think Roman emperors to a large precisely, degree precisely yes yeah. all the names and everything mm. and then the moon which is 13 full moons in a year that would give us a 13 month yeah. year wouldn't yeah. it and in Celtic astrology, they have 13 signs. Mm -hmm. And we also know there is a 13th sign, which, which merges um, the lowest and the highest, as in mm -hmm. Scorpio and Sagittarius. So we need to get into that now. But yes, it's, it's depending on the viewpoint, it can be either feminine or masculine. It right. totally depends. And in German, they have uh, Die Sonne der Mond. So they give a feminine quality to the sun and a masculine quality to the moon. That's good. So you see, they can be interchangeable, actually. Mm. If we if we want to be totally flexible, then it's we can all very do that. subjective, isn't it's, it? Really, it's kind of subjective on mm. what you prefer. But the point being that these systems have had a purpose in just illustrating two different forces, mm. because that they are. One is inward, one is outward. Yeah, um, I think there's a valuable psychological element to these ideas because uh, a lot of people would write off all religion and spirituality by automation and I think one of the big elements I mean you'll find so many books around Glastonbury yeah. Yeah. you know which are talking about you know try this try that it's all to get people trying to um, 
you know, be a bit more positive, a bit more happy, yeah. uh, and get quality of life. And I think these systems, these ideas, are in some cases very valuable for doing that. You yeah, know? sure. Mm. Yeah, as long as one doesn't get caught up in any system, right? Yeah. Whenever a system is is a tool for helping one recognize something, mm -hmm. then if you recognize it, you no longer need the tool. Mm. Then you move on, right? And you would get back to simplicity, yeah. which is a, one of my favorite words, because we want to move out of the mind and all of these difficult concepts. We mm. want to understand, yes, but then once it's understood, okay, got that, then you, you throw away the book, right? Then right. You, you've got it and you integrate it. And then mm. you can move through life much more with ease, like I said, because you're not mm. holding on to it up here. Yeah. You know, you become light. Well, that's good. So, uh, let me see. Oh, um, now, in terms of your skills and abilities, yeah. um, do you do any form of psychic or mediumistic abilities? Do you have any things like that, like spirit communication, um, aura reading, etc.? Okay, well, yes and no, again, because mm. I don't do mediumistic readings as what they might be uh, usually uh, the way they're usually used basically because right. usually they're they're from the astral plane mm -hmm. if we can look at an image of uh, people sitting in an airplane right and the airplane is then ready for takeoff and it goes through this these layers of clouds right and mm. it's a bit bumpy right it's turbulence and then it moves beyond the clouds and into the higher sky right where it's completely blue sky not a cloud mm. it's just clear all right and many psychics they operate from the realm of the clouds which is why it's vague mm. which is why it's it's I see I'm getting a letter G it's just it's not clear yeah. you know and I, I don't want to ridicule them but it's just it's not clear because it's coming from an area mm. yes above the third but it's it's in that foggy area I, I've known some people they've gone along to say for example a spiritualist church not one locally but a spiritualist church I used to know and three weeks later, they're up on the stage being the medium. And I think okay. a bit more time. <laughs> Could be an idea to, to train first, yes. Yes. So, um, so no, I don't operate from that realm. That's I, fine. I operate from the highest realm, which mm. is clear seeing. And I call my clairvoyance clear seeing. I see okay. things as they are. It's not added to, it's not taken away from, it's clear. Okay. And I'm biased and non-judgmental. It's just what is. Mm. And and my powers, um, I mean, remember, what I'm embodying mm. is divinity. It's spirit at its highest. And I'm, okay. I, I look, act, talk completely as a grounded human being, which mm. I want to be. Okay. But the light and the powers in me are of an exceptional level, mm. right? Meaning, if I was able to seed the entire world with a collective consciousness that's now happening mm. this I remember is not any individual I here it's mm. spirit but it happened through me because I did certain acts that set this all in motion mm. like a paid forward movement you know mm. you know the movie with the um, uh, what's their name Helen Hunt and and uh, Kevin um, oh. oh I forgot his name all of a sudden but you know paid forward yeah yeah. And, and this boy, he has an idea where if he helps one person, or he helps three, and then they all have to help three more, right? And it grows mm. really, really fast, exponentially, just becoming a massive movement. Mm. And it becomes a movement. And this is what has happened also now on Earth through me. So that's okay. one superpower. As I said, the clear scene. So, and uh, sorry to yeah. interrupt. So, this effect you would say you have? Yes. is to create more of that more um, like people doing good to others yes. and therefore um, passing it on and yes. it becomes a kind of chain reaction exactly yeah. beautiful it's mm. a chain reaction mm. and then because like you were saying with other claimants they're picking this up from within not mm -hmm. from any outer teacher and so of course they for time being become confused with their I identity while there's still an ego there while there's still an I mm -hmm. and then they can confuse oh I'm Jesus but they're not it's the Christ it's the yeah. Christ energy well, so you get that 
That is the thing I find uh, very funny with a lot of people who are very devout Christians. Yes. They say Jesus Christ, they focus on the Jesus part. Yes. Not so much the other Christ. half, the, the Christ yes. part. Yeah. And that's really good that you bring mm. that up because it's, it's, I don't think people really understand what it feels like mm. for me, right? Okay. Because it's painful for me when they have a lot of real, true love for who I was as Jesus mm. and and then um, they while having that are not loving their their neighbors mm. it's 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 like they focused on the person rather than the message okay. and that really breaks my heart because then again how are they going to embrace and understand me now mm. you know then they're going to focus on the person again and not what I'm saying mm. and that's what's important it's not about this body it's, it's female, like we said, for a purpose, because we're moving now through life with a more feminine way, more intuitively and more through the heart. So mm. there's a reason for it and bringing that balance. But it's not about the person, it's the message, and it's what is being spread now everywhere to the point where, like I said, people actually come, become so identified with it that they believe that they are the identity. Mm. And and that's fine because it will pass and they'll move yeah. on to understanding. It's the, it's I, the I, I could name several people locally, but yeah. I won't bother because I don't want to cause waves. No, not that kind of wave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but it's it can be confusing for people and Christians who have a very beautiful devotion to what I embody and who I am it's it it's it's moving on the one hand and it's also very painful um, that it's like there's a barrier between us because they can't move from the one body into the next unless they really understand what I'm saying you know so I, I have a really special place in my heart for them for everyone but this is something that is challenging for me as the feminine Christ because it it, it demands kind of a leap in their in their understanding mm. and I know that I, I recognize that that does take a lot of a lot out, out of them to do yeah but I, I trust in people's intelligence and I mm. trust in their their ability to feel me maybe more even mm. just just feel my energy and that I'm sincere and I also trust in spirit letting it all unfold the way it's meant to. It's mm. it's all going according to whatever humanity is able to pick up on and do. And everyone who's awakening is helping this happen. Okay. So it's all good. It really is. Good, good. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was a sort of fly on my page. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, you mentioned you weren't that kind of medium, but right. um, one person said, uh, how come you can't speak to, uh, say, JFK and ask him who really killed him? <laughs> so someone oh, with a sense of humour there, uh, that's uh, Mimica, uh, he calls himself. Okay. So uh, and there's another one here, which uh, is from a guy who's a very devout fundamentalist Christian. Okay. Says, are you going to hell or not? <laughs> so well, there is no hell. Mm, Sorry to. So no. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. And and yeah. that's good that he asks this too because mm. I know he's probably serious when he's asking this. Oh, if, I'm sure if, he is. If he's if he's very fundamental. He is. Um, mm. And I understand that. And to to all those who are very fundamental, I just really want to clarify that this is very dualistic. Mm. The, the concept of a heaven and a hell is very dualistic and we've got to move beyond that and recognize whatever hell is, is what we ourselves create, what we ourselves carry inside. Mm. So people who may have had very tragic upbringings or, or just had a tragic life story, they're going to be full of sadness and they might turn that sadness into anger mm. and frustration and hatred and then they're going to be like, it's me against the world. And they're going to project it onto others, right? Mm. And I mean, anyone can see I'm not about anger and frustration and hatred at all. Mm. And and I don't belong in any kind of hell. And I don't feel it inside me. Inside me, That's it's good. heavenly. It's peaceful. It's loving. It's good. And I really want people to experience this within themselves mm. because they're going to feel so good about themselves yeah. and really be able to enjoy life. That's what, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Interesting thing about. Uh you know, uh, Thick Shades, is basically that he's a young, a young Earth creationist. Okay. 
Okay. So he believes the Earth is only six to ten thousand years old. He believes the universe is only that old. Okay. What's your view on creation? Right. Yeah. Um, well, obviously, it's way, way older. I mean, mm, mm. Uh, the science number that they have come up with now is somewhere between what is it, sixteen million, twenty million. Uh, uh, I think it's more like bill billion. Uh, yes, billion I think years. it's 13.8 was one of the last estimates. Very good, yeah. something like that, exactly. Mm. And and this is something that the Mayans, they know this already and they have this calendar, which again is actually on my website. Mm -hmm. And you can see the step pyramid, you can see evolution as in billions of years ago from the cell level, right? And then mm. moving more and more on to gradual higher states of consciousness. And, okay. and now we're at this top of the pyramid in a sense where we're ready to take a quantum leap and recognize the divinity I'm talking about, the, mm. the, the superhuman, the, the beyond the third dimension, the level where we are actually very, very powerful creators, co-creators with Source. Okay, okay. Um, so you would say the minds had a concept of the Earth and indeed the universe being billions of years old. How would you qualify that as being, I mean, have you seen evidence there which is, uh, I believe you've been to various uh, places, you've been, have you been to Chichen Itza? Yes. You have, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. I was at Chichen Itza for uh, December 21, Ah, 2012. well, I see. It was a hot spot where I really wanted to be mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. it was beautiful and we had a, a ceremony with, with the Mayan elder Humbat's men and that was about also initiating now this new age, to use that term, the, the age of Aquarius, okay. which is after age of Pisces, which we've left behind. And um, so yes, I've been in Mexico, I've also been in Peru twice. Okay. And um, people, you may have that as a question, but I'm going to bring it up now because people often ask for proof of what I'm saying. And I don't know if this is billions of years old, probably not, mm -hmm. but it's very, very old. It's, it's a stone that manifested for me in Peru. Okay. And um, uh, this shows... Mm. Um, uh, did you want to show that to the camera? Yes, so, let's show this to the camera. Um, I doubt we'll pick that up, but... Well, we can try We can try like and that. hopefully... <laughs> so, but there's pictures of it on my website. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't want to change the topic, but this is about how old the Earth is. I mean... Mm. Uh, We've got to look at proper studies that are based on history and archaeology mm. and everyone knows that the history that we have been learning in school is a very, very small part portion of the real truth. Oh, absolutely. So yeah. there's a lot of cosmic history, mm. Earth and her role in the cosmos that's coming forward now. Mm. And uh, a lot of people are actually channeling good information there so people can look more into that. Mm. But this is something that came because of my being who I am and not just um, explaining it with words and experiences mm. and the way my entire life has been documented in my book for anyone who has doubts they can, they can check because mm. that's why the book was written right it was to prove I've been walking in peace and in harmony and in alignment with the planets and with the earth rhythms of earth all my life and it's dated and there's witnesses and there are horoscopes and everything that can, can seriously be looked into. Mm. But this is because people often want something physical, you know, like, well, show me, give me a proof, right? And mm. I seriously believe that this was given to me as a gift from the gods in a sense. Okay. When I was in Peru in 2001, <clears throat> because it just manifested in front of me uh, at this temple called the Eye of God Temple. And, and we had been meditating together as a group and I was the last one on my way back to the bus mm -hmm. and this was lying upside down on the ground in front of me and everybody had been walking there but nobody had noticed it mm. or else as I say it may have manifested at that moment and okay. something told me to you know flip it around and I flipped it around and I saw oh there's writing on it and picked it up and and saw this mm. And I'm not going to go too deep into it because, again, there's a lot of information in my book and you have more questions, but it shows, um, it shows the fifth sun, it shows the time we're in now, mm -hmm. and the ladder here is very clearly pointing to ascension. It's about humanity's 
being, like I said, on the top of this evolutionary pyramid and moving now into higher states. Okay. That's what that ladder is symbolizing, ascension. So this goes for right. everyone. It's not regarding any religion. It's the earth itself, everything on earth, and even other planets around us hmm. also ascending, becoming more high frequency, vibrating on finer and higher frequency hmm. levels. Do you so yeah, yeah. What would you, although, what would you mean by that? Like yeah. reaching a higher level, a higher frequency. Yeah. What does that translate into? It translates in into uh, enlightenment, basically. Mm. It translates into, but more than that, even. We can say the way people have been taught that uh, in our DNA we have a lot of junk DNA. That's what they've mm. been calling it, like DNA that has no purpose, and they thought of it as junk DNA, and actually it's the reverse. It's, it's very powerful DNA strands that have just not been awakened yet, they've been dormant, they've been mm. in our system. The way a computer has, um, you know, it has a certain level of, of capacity, and then you get an upgrade, right? And then mm. it can do much, much more. And we have this within ourselves already, and the latter may symbolize that awakening to, 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 of, of higher states of being within ourselves, understanding mm. more of life. Rather than having a golf ball sized consciousness to become enlightened to see all. Mm. This is something that everyone can pick up on according to their own um, capacity and in mm. their own pace. No rush, but whenever they're ready, a little bit by a bit. Well, I'll add a few thoughts uh, on what we've spoken about, you know, the last five minutes or so. Yeah. Um, when it comes down to the minds and understanding the age of the universe. I think that's kind of a bit controversial. Right. Uh, their understanding of evolution, possibly, maybe, slightly doubtful until we have further knowledge, and I think that's the main thing. Yes. Which, to be truly scientific, we have to have more data, which you agreed with, right. of course. Right. Um, with this particular stone, yeah. it's an interesting one. Mm -hmm. But, as with any story, it's something which I suppose if I was being very generous, I'd probably be, remain neutral too, to be right, honest. Right, right. Um, and uh, if not so generous, <laughs> um, what's well, your scepticism? How old do you think this stone is? I have no idea. No idea. I really don't. But I, you do think it symbolizes ascension? Absolutely. And absolutely. Uh, you say I, you found this in Peru? Yes. And I've counted the number of bricks too, because mm -hmm. there are 22 bricks, and 22 is the number of the Hebrew uh, letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Okay. Right. 22 is the number of major arcana cards in the in the tarot. Mm. Um, so how does that relate to? Um, did you find this? Sorry, you're in Peru. Were you actually at uh, Machu Picchu, or were you? Yes, it was after I'd been to Machu Picchu, okay. after I had even been on top of Huayna Picchu, which is the highest mountain in Machu Picchu, in that range. Okay. And I had a very a very uh, deep and powerful communion with spirit, where I saw it as this huge, huge eye and, and light radiance just poured into me. Hmm. Um, and it was the next day when we had traveled further down uh, through Peru to, to southern parts close to the Titicaca Lake. Hmm. And as I said, this is called the Eye of God Temple, and the the temple of Amaru Meru, who was the serpent master from the time of Lemuria, hmm. which is again you talking about times that is thousands and thousands of years ago. This is actually some part of the cosmic history that's coming through now. Hmm. And okay. and I mean, in our short talk here, I can't get into all of the details, but I've counted the numbers, and the number 22 is very significant. It's the master builder. And my name, for instance, is 33, Miranda, it's 33, mm. it's what in Freemasons is the highest level. Um, not that I belong to that, but just, mm. it's, it's, it's a master number because 11 and 22 together become 33, and they, they create this divine triangle, numerologically. Okay. So 11, 22, and 33 are the only master numbers, even though 44, 55, and other double numbers, they also have significance. But these are the three important master numbers. Mm. And so there are master numbers explaining this as a whole, 
as in 22 it's a whole story mm. it shows a master it shows a pyramid which is where we were on December 21 2012 by yeah. the Chichen Itza pyramid and it shows the ascension of all of earth mm. which is what has happened now with this shift not just the shift on December 21 mm. that was a major shift but it had already begun right this goes in stages it goes gradually because it moves like a like a ripple or a wave mm. like we were saying okay. back to me and a new one has begun and then so on it goes on and on yeah yeah I mean it sounds interesting yeah. but obviously I would be personally skeptical about that's fine such I mean things and, that's you know, totally all right yes I can, so I can feel your skepticism yeah I'm sure you <laughs> and can. I mean I'm only giving you a brief part of it aren't I so how could you possibly know you need true. to read um, what I've written about it so okay yeah. so if you are interested you can and if not then we'll leave it at that um mm -hmm. I'll consider it but yeah, yeah. it's a uh, an interesting uh, set of ideas. Mm -hmm. um, I have another question. All right. Um, zero or oh, it's O O blank stare. It's the name of his uh, channel, or All right. maybe her channel. I can't remember now. Um, I have noticed you quote the Bible on your website. Mm -hmm. What's your view on Luke twenty one eight? And here's Luke twenty one eight. Take heed that you not be deceived, mm -hmm. for many will come. <laughs> in my name saying i am he or she yes. <laughs> and the time has drawn near therefore do not uh, do not go after them yeah i love when people quote me back to me <laughs> mm. fair enough yes exactly exactly that's so, what i'm saying take mm. care watch other teachers who are claiming to be me because it's like we were talking about earlier mm -hmm. very important to be discerning and to recognize the gold from the glitter Recognize who is authentic, who is speaking from wisdom, love, experience, mm -hmm. the entire life story. All of this is something that can be looked into mm -hmm. versus those who have picked up on the consciousness and have begun their journey after 96. Mm. It should be fairly easy. And any male claimant, now that we've come into a new age, mm. again, how does that make sense? If we're trying to move into balance, isn't it much more logical that I'm here in female form? Actually, I, I could be, um, I could easily say that if the masculine and the feminine has come before, why not a person who is transgender? Why not a person who is, uh, why not a person who is a uh, hermaphrodite born with both right. sets? I mean, in that kind of scenario. Um, but you've got a point. That's what mm. I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. Mm. And in the Bible, to quote again, it says, and the two shall be one, mm. one flesh. Right. That means not a sexual union. It means one flesh. I am body, mm. Jesus and Mary Magdalene, mm. as one. The twin flames, souls that they are, are merged in me. There has never been anyone who has had this twin in one embodiment, but it's now becoming available as mm. people's DNA is, is, <laughs> is changing. It's an interesting idea, these ideas of... Um like soul flames and different like levels, uh, many of them relate to, of course, the archangels and ver various saints and uh, ascended masters, of course. Mm -hmm. And um, as far as I'm aware, I'm not very good with my Bible, mm -hmm. but I, I don't think it really goes on about that in the Bible. Mm -mm. So, where was where does that really emanate from? Do you know, it emanates from more of the new consciousness coming through, mm. and people recognizing more of what a soul really is okay and what consciousness is mm. it's energy and scientifically we can talk about this with quantum physics as in the difference between particle and wave mm. and quantum physicists say that we can have either a particle or a wave but we can't have both at the same time and i mm. say yes we can it's actually. like uh well the the, I the idea is um oh it now? Got out of my head. Let me let me finish. Then. <laughs> you finish then. Yes, you finish. <laughs> I'll finish. I think that's better. It'll come back to me. <laughs> it probably will, but I was also uh, explaining something. Oh, okay. So particle wave being a drop and sea, right? The drop is the particle, and the sea or the ocean is the wave. And we are all, as wave, part of a whole. Mm. And as particle or drop, we are individuals. So we are both. Do you see what yeah. I mean? But it, it's about defining, um, like, the more you try and define the um, 
the speed of a moving particle, the harder it is to actually find its position. Yeah. And with that, if you're trying to define a object which is moving, to try yeah. and find its position within yes. within space and time becomes yes. harder to harder to do because you get to such a small scale yeah. that there is no set position because it's constantly on the move and you can't yes. really exactly. Grasp it. Which so, is why what we were talking about earlier about mm. being and not being mm. and that would be the not being, wouldn't it? It would be that it's constantly moving. It's constantly changing mm. all the time, and so how can you measure it? You can't. Mm. It's it's mm. immeasurable, and so what my book does is it's trying to do that impossible, measure the divinity, mm. uh, measure uh, something that's eternal, that's that's everywhere, that it's in everyone, and it does so by finding a point in space time, because mm. there is no time. It's all timelessness. So trying mm. to define it, you have to find a point in time. And look at that point and that's what we do with my birth chart that's okay let's start here mm. and then we look at it from there like like a, a big ball with lots of threads and then you find one and you start to pull on it and then you can see okay what's what so you unfold it like that and then you can take a look and it's an example and everybody else has similar experiences and life stories but mm. they don't have that same awareness their whole life that I've had which is why when you read it, you get it from my perspective the whole way through from the very start. And mm -hmm. it shows that what I call omnisynchronicity, meaning being on time all the time, every moment. That's what that can show. So okay. then you can actually measure something divine and eternal if you, if you choose any point in time and start from there. So you can prove something divine and eternal? Yes. And... But it's, is it more of a spiritual journey in that regard as opposed to something which you can actually examine as opposed well, you, to... You can examine it as, spirit, as a spiritual journey but also okay. as, as history because you can't change something that's happened. Like, like um, it's a fact when something has happened. Like, I don't know, the fact that we're sitting here right now, mm. this time on this date, it's a fact that it can't be changed, right? tomorrow we will say mm. that's where we were yesterday yeah and I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not talking about parallel universes now okay because no, that would really no. make it complicated so let's it just would. stick to one dimension at a time that's fine all right that's fine and that's what my book does it shows with all clarity that after I have been somewhere for instance there will be a crop circle up here with a certain image belonging to uh, a symbol that people will understand in relation mm. to something else they will have associations with it right mm. right after I've been there or on my very birth date and these are just examples but it's like when I say witnesses and dates it's because this is something you can't change it it's in the past my whole life story is my proof mm. you see that's what I mean that's how you can measure measure something divine it's by time time is the language we all speak yeah it's now yeah. Sorry to interrupt you, but it, yeah. it's one of those things where I could very easily hear a very similar story from, say, um, there's a gentleman who lives over in Australia right. called uh, Alan, I think it's Alan John Miller. Okay. Now, he claims to be the reincarnation of Jesus Christ. Okay. He has his uh, partner right. who claims to be Mary Magdalene. Right. And they would claim that the things which have happened through their life, yes. like he was originally a Jehovah's Witness, right. and he went through that and then he realised this isn't the right path for me and he created his own religion. Right. Right. He would say a very similar story, I imagine, of yeah. all these realisations, these proofs within his life, right. which brought him to a particular point where he realised, um, I'm here to bring about this change. Yeah. Mm. I'm and very glad you brought that up. Shall I okay. answer? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Go ahead. Because I've actually have heard about them, and it just it just makes me smile. Um, I really believe that they believe in what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But like I said, uh, if if Jesus and Mary Magdalene were to come back mm. and use those names again and be two people, then they would be repeating history. We're bringing in the new. Mm. We're bringing in the new. This is a higher consciousness. It means, like I said, with the two becoming one flesh, it means everyone needs to embody both mm. male and female within, which I do. So that's one point. The other is, I haven't had any um, 
uh, learning process like he did he was in Jehovah's Witness and then learned no this isn't the one that's very exclusive right mm. he learned from that and moved on which is good I came already as an ascended master I haven't had any learning process in that sense but you wait, wait because okay, if you're going to go interrupt on. me I'm not going to be able to finish right, clarify okay. my flow yeah, right sure so this is why there's a difference he also has not spent 14 years documenting as precisely that proof of who he is the way I have done with my book I haven't done it for myself I've done it to show this mm. and and record as a real good Mayan re record keeper would do um, the way my movements are in alignment with the planets if mm. he can show with horoscopes the way his life has been in alignment with planets I'd be very interested in seeing that mm. but no one can because there is only one matter of what people are able to recognize yes okay not interpretation recognize those who recognize gold from glitter will see. And that's something I've said before. Those with ears to mm. hear and eyes to see, they will know the difference. Well, this is the peculiar thing. There's yeah. another person who lives in Australia. Okay. There's a few of them. Oh my goodness. <laughs> They're breeding. How interesting. Um, yeah, um, a guy called um, Brian uh, Leonard Go Lightly Marshall. Right. He claims to be. Uh, both Christ and Father God come to earth right. and you right. he claims to have um, been able to speak from an extremely young age with the knowledge right. and he has made many prophecies and many ideas he has yes. a small following on the internet yeah. and um, he has also calculated using the Great Pyramid right. his uh, birth date his age, mm -hmm. when he was born, mm -hmm. all of these uh, connections, mm -hmm. which seem to confirm that he is this. I don't know if he's done it by the planets as well, but right. if a person is looking for a pattern, they'll very often, I think, find that pattern or even create the pattern. Right. And with that, it becomes very hard to make a very easy differential between different claimants. Yes, so, I agree. I think mm. it can be different, uh, I mean, difficult. Mm. Uh, and that people really need to be discerning and look into it and not just reject one or the other but actually mm -hmm. study this and I don't doubt for one second that he may have a, a great deal to bring he may be a very good prophet he may have a good clairvoyance ability but he's not the unifying factor for humanity for this age because mm -hmm. that's one and there are many satellites around the one who work also with enlightening with spreading love, with spreading consciousness, who work as teachers. I mean, that's the whole point. The more they become one with this energy, the more the I, uh, the self or the spirit, whatever you want to call it, that's embodied here, is actually able to work its magic all around the world. It's the same I in other bodies. Do you understand? I, I, I do. It comes down to a very uh, interesting thing. It's best described through the... Um, the end time prophets who tend to get yes. largely in America. Right. You have, uh, what's his name, William Tapley, um, Peter Popoff, a bunch of people over there who are all claiming to be to be God's prophet. You okay, know. yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're those sorts of people. Right. And um, they all make great claims and they all say that, you know, the time is near. And I suppose that Bible quote says a lot about that doesn't it and mm. the way they seem to work because they're literally doing that they're literally saying they come in the name of he and all this kind of stuff or they are he and it becomes in that kind of situation if we accept one person as being genuine and others as being satellites around that person it becomes very hard to pick out who is the center of this yes. this galaxy of thought yes precisely. and who, who is actually a satellite or, or they could easily be a person who or you know a, a person with a mission or being who seems to be with many in orbit around them yes but they're merely a satellite of a greater continuum yes you know which is why I'm saying again that it's so important for people to really investigate and to study so they can see mm. the gold from the glitter they will know on my website which is completely free right mm -hmm. because the book itself has a price but it's because I could not change the price to make it lower. It's thick, it's heavy, mm. and um, it's not me deciding that price. And if people find that too much, then they're very free to get the electronic version, which is not expensive. Mm. And I have spent a lot of time getting excerpts from the book out there on my website for free because mm -hmm. I really want this to be accessible to people. Okay. And to answer this, it's like 
Many claimants one source. So, okay, so ask them then, how did they initiate the cosmic Christ consciousness way, right? If they're source, right? Mm. If they're God or Jesus, Mary, Mary, if they're any of these on earth now, then obviously they must be the cause, right? And the collective consciousness is the effect. Okay, so ask them mm. how did they do this? Because I have answered this in my book, the way I seeded it. Okay. Also, ask the male, how can they explain the re-emergence of the sacred feminine? How can they explain that if they're in male form? What is it that's making the sacred feminine come come so alive again? If I had you in the room with some of those people, it would be interesting. I would no love doubt. to. But <laughs> I'm really ready to talk about this but and get to the heart of it. They the would matter. throw out every single selected Bible verse they could find. Yeah. You that's know, just one of many branches oh, on yeah, the tree. Or they would pick, you know, pick up a Quran or yes. any other holy book, any right. other scripture, or a scripture they've created for themselves. Perhaps. And they would then say that's justification and have their own mm. you know, their own sets of terminology. Yeah. And with that it becomes well it becomes a bit like uh, someone's walking through a house of mirrors yes. and there are many distortions. Exactly. And sometimes you think there's a person standing in front of you. Mm. In fact, they're standing over there. Right. And it becomes very confusing. Absolutely. Absolutely. I totally mm. agree, which is why I said, watch, because many will come in my name and say that mm. they are me. Okay. Many will and many do. And on the one hand, it's important to distinguish between gold and glitter in order to know who is being truthful and knowing that the words that come out of this mouth mm. are the highest in the sense that it's source it's okay. the living word what people are picking up on further down in the wave in the ripple is aspects of this source but they're further down it's like the whispering game you know when you whisper something to someone oh yes and then they whisper it and they whisper it and it comes out at the end and it's been like you said completely distorted mm -hmm. it's not even true anymore and that's why it's important to know which one is the source so you get it at its highest clarity level and the other thing is also to remember I have a lot of compassion for these people because a lot of them are seriously picking up on the Christ consciousness mm. of love and oneness and are meaning well they're meaning to do good you see I don't see it as competition mm. but for those who are actively seeking um, something that's authentic and real that I'm only saying be wary that's mm. all I'm saying be discerning well that sounds like good advice yes yeah I, I agree um, well yeah I'll ask you this one yeah. um, how do you see or think of Christianity right we've mentioned this a little bit already yes. but would you see it as being perhaps a bit too restrictive in terms of spirituality. I understand. Mm. Well, um, it depends, again, in a way, on each individual Christian, because mm. there are a lot of Christians who have completely understood the message of, of love and of sisterhood, brotherhood, mm. are living very ethically, are going to church and are very devoted. And I mean that actually within all branches of Christianity. Mm. There are a lot of sincere uh, people. But Christianity in the sense of, as you're probably asking, like the institution right, and the church, mm. there has been a lot of negative acts performed, as oh, you know, yes. by the church over the ages, and that is not good. And this is why when I say I'm the feminine Christ, it's also because I become that which can heal that part of the collective body of humanity. Mm. It's because I'm not here as a savior in the sense everybody has to walk their own path, mm. but I'm here to repair or heal the wound which has really become a big part of all of humanity because it was the, the Jesus, the male version and the church's version of Jesus, remember, mm. that was embraced. And the feminine sacred energy as Mary Magdalene mm -hmm. was ignored, was ridiculed, was put down. Oh, yes. And now, back to why I was saying I'm in female form, it's to bring this up again and mm. heal that part of the psyche, the emotional body and the psyche within humanity. Otherwise, I could have also used Kuan Yin. Or, or any other female avatar as mm. a 
as a name for my embodiment, right? Yes. But again, I'm universal, so that would just be one facet. Hmm. But this is why I use the term Christ specifically rather than the female Buddha, because it's Christianity that has caused this deep wound. And I so agree. I become the antidote, if you see yeah. what I mean. It's interesting because it does link, uh, link back to the, uh, the Bible verse from yes. earlier, yes. where, uh, you know, people have come and said, I am he, or in the case of say the Roman Catholic Church, I speak on behalf of he, right. uh, with popes who were in the past literally seen as being God on earth. Precisely. You know. And I am goddess on earth mm. in that sense, really, really am. And I love that we're having this talk now and you're mm. asking me good questions because I'm, I'm completely truthful and I have no ambitions of fame and glory, of lots of money, none of that, but I am very dedicated to coming forward and to being listened to the way you're asking questions now. Mm. I don't care if they're asking from a sense of, oh, I want to I wanna debunk what she's saying. <laughs> I really don't mind. I want us yeah. to look at everything. Mm. That's honest. That's truthful. Mm. And I also know what I'm saying is very challenging for people, so we're doing it like here in a park in a very gentle way mm. and whoever watches on YouTube if they don't like what I'm saying they can switch it off right That's it's right. non-threatening and very very gradually I will come more and more forward because mm. a lot of people are going to resonate with what I say and they will recognize me and that's the point to be an example to shine my light to bring back clarity to a lot of things that have, have become confused well, that sounds very good in a gradual way though right yeah. so it's not overwhelming right well Here's an interesting thought. I was going to ask about Islam and Hinduism, but I think we've covered enough of Christianity, really. Okay. So if you don't mind, I'm going to move on to the, uh, the next one, which is uh, atheism. Right. And I would have that alongside with, like, agnosticism. Okay, yeah. Uh, disbelief or lack of belief or lack yeah. of knowledge of. Right. When it comes down to the divine. Yes. What would be your, well, your way of understanding that? Or right. addressing that yeah what are your thoughts the way I would address that is if people can find within themselves a place where it's basically loving and good mm. regardless of religion regardless of seeing me as the feminine Christ or anything if they can just feel okay I want to be a good person mm. I don't believe there's anything more this is it while I'm here I'm going to make a good life for myself mm. I'm going to enjoy my family I'm going to lead an ethical good life for myself because that gives me satisfaction then mm. that's it that's that's pretty much key that's good it's keeping it very simple and down to earth mm. and but the, the the beauty is that you see it's not even opposing to what i'm saying on the contrary it's it's all the same basic truth every human being seeks the same things they seek comfort they seek love and security mm. they seek to be with their family and loved ones they want to live a life of abundance and I don't mean like materialistically riches but I mean abundance that you have what you need when you want um, and and just enjoy life right mm. and that's what it's really all about so mm. putting everything else aside stick to that live ethically live joyfully harm no one hmm. and, and, and be good. I think that's fair, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Live yeah. a good life and uh, try and do good to those about you. Exactly. To create a better world. Love thy neighbour as thyself, right? That sounds thy neighbour is thyself, that's well, it, whether you believe it or not. Well, very good. Yeah. Um, what's your view on conspiracy theories? Okay, yeah. Uh, do you have any uh, beliefs about things like that, do you think that uh, certain unpleasant groups rule the world? I, th I think they do to a degree, mm. but I think that's usually called corruption and... Uh, greed? Yeah, greed. <laughs> but uh, do you believe in things uh, beyond that? Uh, I understand your question. Uh, it's mm. not a matter of believing in it, it's, it's what is out there. Um, okay. Yes, there are some people, forces out there with negative selfish intent. Okay. Because they're greedy, basically. Mm -hmm. um, but the power that people give them is no way near the level of their real power, mm. actually. So, in other words, the more people uh, address conspiracy theories and, and give that their attention, the more they're actually feeding any of those kinds of forces, 
who are then just you know rubbing their hands in glee that uh, haha they believe in me right it's mm. it's the best thing to do is to know okay for the time being there are still some forces on earth that have selfish intentions mm. but their power is very very minimal it's so minimal that what people may be seeing now are their last cramp efforts clutching at straws because humanity itself has moved so far beyond that kind of darkness mm. even those who you say now are agnostics or atheists mm. it doesn't even have to be a spiritual awakening but they're finding goodness in themselves and they're not buying into it mm. and so my take is the, the less attention people give to this the better for everyone mm. stay in your light stay in in would you say that's, um, well, how to put this, is it more ignoring the problem or is it more dealing with the problem but not allowing you to carry away that darkness with you? Yes, mm. it's the latter actually mm. because you're not ignoring it, you're aware of it. Yeah. But by not giving it your attention and your focus, that is empowering it, like I said. Right. So you choose, okay, I'm not looking at that. I'm going to focus on my family. I'm going to focus on right here. I'm going to focus on what I can actually do. Mm. What can I actually do where I am for the whole? Mm. Or, or if it's not even that altruistic, as in wanting to serve, but just what do I want to be? What are my unique talents and gifts? Mm. How do I want to live my life? And then do that, you know, follow your own inner desires and passions mm. and become the best version of yourself you can possibly be mm. right that is actually adding good energy to the whole rather than focusing on darker forces and giving them your energy and then being uncomfortable in your own system mm. because you'll be feeling oh i don't like this darkness you know thinking of it i've seen that so many times with conspiracy theorists yes they focus so much on the conspiracies they become paranoid and they think everyone's in the conspiracy it's easy to get caught up on it it yeah. is it yeah, really it is. is and it's not to ignore that like i said there are still forces there but the way i explain it is that like we said evolution is a gradual process right mm -hmm. and we've gone through leaps and leaps every time spirit incarnates there is a quantum leap in the collective consciousness which is why it incarnates again and again and again, mm -hmm. which is why it's back here now. And um, so, let me see now, I lost my thread. Um, conspiracies, darkness, right. Mm. <laughs> and so the way, thank you for giving me that time. That's okay. The way, <laughs> the way I explain it is that the shift from December 21, 2012 mm. was another one of those quantum leaps, right? Mm. I came forward actually into the public and that had an effect and a lot of this negativity we still see in the world I say it's in the old age it's on that side of December 21 2012 we have right. moved into the new age mm -hmm. where this age is pristine and clear it's new whatever we bring of darkness into it we have to take responsibility for it on an individual level mm. because these are just the forces work themselves out like down in the ripple and they're going to seize completely mm. where we are the majority of humanity creating the new already and building a new heaven on earth, on earth as, yes. as in a better way of being mm. more ethical more environmental friendly healthier you know yeah, yeah. well that sounds wonderful um, what's your view on Nibiru and Planet X are you familiar with that topic or yes I am you've heard of it of course yes I am well, that's, that's kind of an enigma because, again, it would be down to interpretation, mm. I would say. Um, the thing about um, the age we're moving into is that a lot of things are divine and also magical. Okay. With magical, I use that term now to explain something that's out of the ordinary, what we've not been used to. Mm. And so even the part of our cosmos is changing. Nibiru comes back again and again and when it does it brings certain energies to earth but then it disappears again so mm. it has a, it has an element or an energy to it that is for a specific time being and mm. then it moves away again that's pretty much what I would say about that okay yeah. um, 
What's your view? It's not destructive. <laughs> uh, that's what people well, that's wonder. Like, yeah, no, no, there's no. a whole thing last it's, year and before yes. people saying it was going to be the uh, end of the world. Exactly. Or no. at least as we know it. Yes. You know, no, so. it's not. Just so that's clear. Okay. Um, what's your view on like, ancient aliens, ancient astronaut theory? Yeah. Do you think aliens came here in the yeah, distant past? Absolutely. And affected absolutely. civilization, had contact, yes. maybe created uh, a lot of civilization or even created humanity? What do you think of that? Uh, well, I wouldn't say created humanity. Um, mm. It's more, we ourselves are part of cosmos okay. and come from other parts of cosmos when we're not incarnated, mm, mm. right? When we come to Earth, we come from somewhere and we go somewhere when we leave our bodies, right? Mm. But, but consciousness or souls come again and again and again. This is what the majority actually of people believe. The majority of people on Earth believe in reincarnation and see it as much more logical than just well, having one incarnation. I, I wouldn't necessarily say the majority. You've got um, about a billion Hindus in the world, but you've got... Um, if you look at the graph on Wikipedia of religions in the world, you've got all you've, the Sufi and the Buddhists and the, and the Hindus Mm. And a lot of you have, age. and you've got the New Age as well, but you yeah. you haven't got um, the uh, the Jewish, you haven't got the Christian, or at least most Christians, not all. You haven't got most Christians, you haven't got uh, most Muslims apart from the Sufi uh, Muslims. But um, that is the big block of obviously the Abrahamic right. religions, right. really. And you add into that uh, some of the other beliefs which have grown up around that, and yes. you have a very similar situation where they would disagree with uh, I understand. reincarnation. That's that's where that's this is the probably most evident area where mm. people will will fall off regarding what I'm saying and understanding okay. my being here because if they can't believe in re in reincarnation then how can I return? Mm. And that's why they would dismiss you out of hand. Right, so yeah. how do they expect Jesus to return? Mm. I would really like to know. Well, what would be the most natural way for Jesus to return? Um, they believe on the clouds, like like floating somehow? Uh, I think they probably would because... And that's just, I don't understand that personally. To me that's that's not intelligent. It's just how well, are you going to I can agree down? to that because I don't believe in it. but. It's one of those things like, how could he float up right. or ascend? Right. So if it's not an actual descent from the sky, yes. it could be a manifestation, right. as in, you know, uh, descending from descending from a higher dimension to bring about a um, a, a spiritual renaissance or something. You know, right. but it that's could be just argued. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. Which is why it's so important to look at this because people mm. need to ask themselves if they have a belief, then. Why do they believe that? Mm. Or how? Or how can they explain it? Because how can you explain any more nat natural and logical way of returning other than reincarnation? Mm. It's the most natural way for a soul to return. And, and, and the ascension that you're talking about, what they saw, was um, the body being ascended, as in there is no death, we, it, life goes on and on. We have very, very many mm. bodies which are part of our auric fields, right? Mm. And so this is also something that is much more easy to comprehend if you can just wrap your brain around it, mm. then everything else falls into place. Everything starts to make sense. Karma makes sense. Suffering on earth actually makes sense. You understand it's a learning process and it's something that yeah. will be moved beyond. It's a phase. Although, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but many people would disagree with the Hindu interpretation of uh, of karma, right. because you end up with a situation where you end up with people who are very poor and basically destitute. They've got nothing to their name, yes. and they're forced to beg. Yes. And they go, "Oh, it's their karma from a previous life, right. which has caused them to go down as opposed to going up." Right. And I think that's where there's a big difference between uh, some of the more traditionalist branches of uh, karmic understanding in India. Yes. as well as in some other places as well, yes. compared to what we're seeing with New Age and some of the other beliefs yes. around world relating to that. Well, Where I agree. It, the, mm. the, the, the view of karma there is, well, again, this is a big topic, but okay. it, it needs to be understood fully because it's not mm. like 
you you are reincarnated as a human being and mm. then you can come back as a fly for instance it doesn't make sense because mm. you will never go backwards in your evolution if you've been here as a human you will only move on as another human another human move gradually towards more and more evolved states of being you don't go backwards well it's one of the things with uh, evolution in terms of biological evolution isn't necessarily towards um, greater levels of intellect or necessarily um, being better to do with adaption to environment so if spirituality is affected by that in terms of that progression that development then uh, if a person has been abused as a child they live a bad life as a result because they're traumatized um, any effect upon them how would that affect their you know spiritual progression I mean it's it's a very peculiar idea I mean for, for example um, evolution on animals we see now if humans all vanish tomorrow there would automatically be the process of certain animals becoming more intelligent and eventually replacing us necessarily unless there's the no, no, necessary no, no. Um, conditions to create that and That's therefore That's it, animal, so. in terms of well we're not talking about the same thing here because you know, there's but this humans missing link, were animals. Right? Well, that's another thing. That that's would be another Dar thing. Darwin, right? I mean, mm. we've got to look at this carefully now because we don't want to move so hastily that we skip important parts to okay. the story, right? Because right. then things can again be misunderstood. And we don't want that. So that's true. We're talking about a lot of things at once here. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, no, it's interesting, <laughs> but let's just grab one thing at a time. You got it. Um, so, regarding the karma in the east. Mm. Um, I think that's pretty much uh, a big topic. In one of my satsangs, I actually talk a lot about suffering and the best way to end it actually being, like we were saying, with your consciousness, the more you are in, in love, in peace, in harmony within yourself, mm -hmm. then that is what you are giving to the whole. It's a way of actually helping all of humanity to heal. Okay. And on a practical level, for those who are really passionate, they can go there and they can help physically by bringing them food and showing compassion mm. in a practical way right so yeah I've talked about this in my satsangs okay. um, you asked initially now about the ancient aliens and oh yes and this is where we come back to animals and humans and evolution it's mm. because we are not created by the aliens but we ourselves are aliens in the sense that a lot of us, or actually all of humanity, comes from the cosmos. We've been seeded from other parts of the of the universe okay. long, long time ago. This is what explains the different races on Earth. How else mm. can you explain? We have Asians, we have Africans, we have Caucasian, we have different types looking. It's well, it's, I, it's I, I one source. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm talking now in a spiritual way and in a way of evolution. Mm. There's one source we all come from, but we've lived in many areas of the universe mm. as as beings, as, as light beings, um, intelligent beings, and we are incarnated onto Earth uh, by the union of man and woman, right, as babies. But the soul has, like I said, a consciousness from way before. It's mm. not just all of a sudden brand new and learning from, from the beginning. We okay. come again and again. And so... A lot of the ancient aliens uh, videos that I made, some of them are very good and some of them are also limited in their understanding, just mm. so people are aware of this. Mm. Uh, but they're interesting and they're, they're, I recommend to watch and, uh, and be discerning as usual. And what they show is that in ancient buildings and sacred sites, as mm. you say, they have carvings of ancient astronauts showing us coming here on Earth. Well, that seems to be the case in some cases where we can, for example, see with, uh, I think, some Incan artifacts and some Aztec artifacts, for instance, uh, yeah. for instance uh, things that appear to be um, a person who looks like they're wearing a space suit, right, for example, for instance, yes. and there are cave paintings which are very similar, seem to have a domed thing. Right. Uh, there are some suggestions about halos as well, were halos referenced to some kind of domed helmets as well. Um, but, but also in it's art. very debatable. It very mm. absolutely. But if people again start to study this, you can see see even in art, like in Da Vinci or um, some of his artwork, mm -hmm. there is a picture, for instance, of 
of a Mary figure, I think, and then there's a UFO in the sky painted in the background. Oh, uh, right? yeah, yeah. Right? You mm. know the picture? I think I do. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of this is to show that they've always been here, right? Mm. Always. We have always been there. They are us. We are part of them as much as we are part of our sisters and brothers here on Earth. Mm. Our star family, as I like to call them, are also us. Would you say you've had uh, contact with them yourself? Yes, and yes. I, am, I, I, I include myself in this because you hadn't heard about Billy Meyer, but, um, but he is one who had a lot of contacts with um, a Pleiadian called Semyase, which is actually semi Yahve, it means half God in a sense. Okay. And it's, it's, it's another part of myself mm. when I am on another dimension beyond this third one right mm. and um, because we are all multidimensional we can be in other places at the same time this is what mm. quantum physics, physics talks about as parallel universes right uh, yeah yeah yes. it's I know it's hard and it might not be what your viewers are used to listening to but this is this is all very real it's it's not at all um, spectacular in any way it's mm. Every choice can have a multiple variety of possibilities, mm. right? Did you see the movie Sliding Doors with Gwyneth Paltrow? Oh, I did, yes, I've seen that. Good, mm. good. I hope some viewers have too. Yeah. It, it shows how, you know, with a split second, her life can take one of two directions mm. and they show both, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's beautiful because it's not complicated when it's just two. You can sort of hang on to each story. Mm -hmm. But potentially we can have many at the same time. It's just that our awareness is always where we're at at the moment. Mm. My awareness is now totally here on you, right? Mm. But I also have parts of my awareness that are picking up sounds around me mm. and you know, and, and my eyes can also pick up other things going on yeah. because I'm multidimensional. Okay. I could have a thought right now like Mexico and my thought process brings me to Mexico perhaps to a memory of when I was there in December, right? Mm. And I'm still sitting here. So this is very, very normal. Everybody does it. They just don't think about it. Mm. And so, um, big field here now, but what I'm talking about is um, Mira Semyase is I in a higher dimension than the third, mm -hmm. which can access people's consciousness on the inner planes mm. and does so all the time. The way spirit from the highest level also has been awakening people from within. Okay. okay. So Jesus has another name on the inner planes, which is Sananda. I don't know if you've I heard this. I think I've heard that, yeah. You've heard this, right? And that's a higher level above Mira Sanyasa. Mm. And I can tune in to people from within as Jesus, as Sananda, for those who resonate with that frequency. Mm. You see, it's like a radio, and I have all of these different stations, as do we all, but I can move from one to another very aptly, I'm very good at this. And this is what my book again is also explaining. And so, um, back to the ancient aliens, they are us. When people are physically sleeping and dreaming, they're actually, most of the time, out of their body and in other dimensions, recharging themselves, having experiences that in the beginning may seem very chaotic and strange, but it's because their third dimensional consciousness is not yet used to being anywhere else. Okay. So they need to start to look at their dreams and see, okay, what's going on? And the more they start to look at their dreams, then the energy, which is the attention, right, will mm. go there and they will have more and more clarity in their dreams and they will understand their own other parts of being in other dimensions. Okay. It really helps them to not space up, but to actually become more of who they are right here. Hmm. It's like gathering more of yourself into this body here and embracing all parts of yourself. Does okay. that make sense? I, I think so, yes. Yeah. I'm sorry, it might be complicated, but <laughs> again, this is well, something that I can explain more. Uh, hopefully the audio will be fine on this and yes. <laughs> everyone else will be able to try and work it out yeah. as well. So I hope it'll so. be fine, get some interesting yeah. comments and some yes. interesting feedback. Okay, I hope but, so. Yeah. Uh, where was I? Um, diddly do, diddly do. Um, oh, a comment from Hellbound Wizard. Uh, okay. Interesting name. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Um, well, you don't believe in uh, many of the ideas which are out there 
with Christianity, which are largely, I would say, manifested by the the Romanization of Christianity. Uh, you know, it's like selected certain books and such. But um, whom is the Antichrist, and when will the abomination of desolation occur? And if what? If not, why not? Okay. Wow. So, good that, question. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Well. Um, okay. So there could be several embodiments mm. who could be seen as the Antichrist, actually. Okay. Um, point being, the Antichrist is actually any energy that is anti-Christ, that, mm. is, that is operating against the cosmic Christ consciousness, which is love and unity. So it's mm. something that's very, very dark. So, we had... Wait, let so, me explain. Okay. I'm going to get into the Queen, the Pope, and, and different things now, all right? Go for it. Yes. Okay. Uh, but first, I want to say that, like I'm saying with, with who I am as being Source, mm. things happening in the world have happened due to my being here, and there will be cause and effect very often. Mm. And so, um, when we look at numbers too and dates like 9-11, that's intentionally done because they actually know that that 9-11 or, or 11th of September mm. is Jesus' real birth date. It was not December 25th. That was the winter solstice and the church chose to Christianize it, right? Mm. To make it a Christian holiday because it was a pagan one. Yeah. And it doesn't make sense to have sheep out in the fields in December. It was It was September. Hmm. So I have my horoscope as Jesus in my book for people to see. It's all, it's also on my website. Okay. Likewise, 22-7, this is the feast day of Mary Magdalene. It's also a very, very important day and a great energetic power on that day. Hmm. In Norway, there was a man who chose that day to do terrorist acts. I don't know if you remember. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, it was a bunch of youth and, and the... the parliament building in Oslo mm. and a lot of people were killed I think it was 77 so again the numbers are not random and okay and on <coughs> the one hand you know that the diff the difficulty the judge a jury had in deciding his sentence was is he insane mm. right or did he know what he was doing and it became quite complicated because his belief systems are very tied to what he sees as being uh, uh, belonging to this order and mm. he was not operating alone and so on and so on and so again I don't want to go too far into the details but the point okay. being that was an act that happened in Norway mm. on the day of the feminine Christ the current or known Mary Magdalene because I'm not yet known mm. and it was in a way antichrist because it's always darkest before the dawn remember mm. And this happened right before I was able to come forward after having lived, you know, 16 years knowing who I am in okay. silence. <clears throat> and so he is one aspect of that dark energy. Mm. And, and it was from a higher viewpoint actually meant to be because it woke people up. There's a lot of wars and terror going on all around the world. People watch the news and they're numbed out it goes in here out there and they're not feeling it because they're so used to seeing this that they've actually become numbed numb what, desensitized desensitized mm. thank you perfect word so when this happened in a peaceful little country like Norway without mm. provocation all of a sudden the world paid attention and they're like, how can this happen in peaceful Norway mm. it's because the light that was to come the light of the north, that's where it was seeded, right? Into Norway, I was living there. Okay. That was about to come through, and this darkness shook people up and prepared, in a sense, the way for a love. Because what came out of that is that people of Norway showed the rest of the world how they responded to this. Hmm. Did they respond with anger and frustration? No, 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 no. They gathered in the streets. The crown prince said the streets today are filled with love. Hmm. They had flowers pictures everything put down for the people they were united mm. and even the funerals a lot of the youth they they wouldn't wear black they wore white in honor of their classmates whom they had lost 
So I think it was beautiful and amazing and deeply inspiring and I was moved to tears to see it. And so the horrible acts, although I, I totally, you know, condemn the acts, mm. I, I really want to explain they had a deeper purpose, which was to wake people up and for uh, Norway to show their level of consciousness and love because I've been living there now all these years and it's spread. It's spread. Norway has a very important role regarding um, being uh, a country to look to in many, many ways. They still mm. have their issues, but they're doing quite well. Mm. Now, to move on to the Pope and the Queen, I moved here, I relocated to England on the equinox last year, which is a day when light and dark are equal, right? right. Again, balance. <coughs> And oh, that's all right. And I was in Mexico at Chichen Itza for December 21st, right, mm -hmm. for the winter. And one month later, back in England, I was in Wales at a very sacred fountain, which is dedicated to the goddess, mm. uh, Mother Earth goddess. It's actually womb, symbolically, the way Avalon here is the heart, all mm. right? So it was very important for me to go there shortly after I had just been in Chichen Itza and bring my energies there and also merge myself with these sacred energies. And it was at that time that the Pope resigned, ah. right? And what happened? Lightning hits the Vatican, right? Do you mm. remember? And it was, again, something I've prophesied in my book would happen because he is the last Pope. He is 16, and in tarot, that's, that's the tower. And on that card, 16, in the major arcana, lightning hits this tower. And mm. so it was very, very symbolic that that happened because it's mm. to show he is not God's representative on earth, the way you were saying, I am. Okay. Okay? This is the shift, and I'm not saying it from arrogance. I'm saying as one who holds the true frequency of the divine for mm. this age, the anchor, mm. okay? And so this was all happening simultaneously because everything is connected, because it's cause and effect. Mm. And another thing was also the queen. See, we're talking about powerful things here now. Yeah, all the sirens are going off. <laughs> this is not coincidental. And the queen, uh, I really don't want to talk a lot about um, acts that she has been doing. But just say that uh, it's it's a bloodline that's not the authentic bloodline okay. for for um, for this age and for what's now all becoming brought to light again. Mm. Everything that's been twisted or dark or hidden is changing so that all the light of truth can come forward. And so there's a lot there that will be seen and. She hasn't shown herself in public since the Olympic Games, and there's a reason for this. It's because her power is, is dwindling, right? Well, and she has been doing things here and there, hasn't she? Yes, but... Not on the same level, of course, but... Right. So, again, I really public. want to be careful, uh, but if we're going to talk about how even on the, the British passport, it mm. says, Dieu et mon droit, right? God and my right and it's about the divine right to govern mm. and she does not have the divine right to govern mm. right mm. this is also something I wrote about in it's the article called love is the real power mm. on my website I really recommend that one okay and and that's where I explain her role and the Pope and the lightning and this all happening while I'm in Wales one month exactly after December 21st mm. So, long story, but it's important for people to be aware of that Antichrist is not one person, but it's an energy that seeks power and, and rulership, pretty mm. much, even, over others, rather right. than a divine power that is to spread to people, to empower them. Mm. It's mm. the opposite is why it's anti. Mm. So I hope that will help to explain. I, I think that's quite clear actually. I hope that's so. Very good. So uh, yeah, I've got a bit lost in your conversation. It's <laughs> very interesting. Yeah. Um, let me see. 
I think I'll go on to the last few questions. All right. Um, this is from Killer Without Spam. He says, "Could you please ask um, her Christmas?" <laughs> I don't need that kind of. You don't need that kind of title. No, please. I'm just keep it that simple. It makes you sound like the Queen, doesn't it? You know? It does, and yeah. it's it's not that kind of Queen. We're not talking about a crown. We're talking no. about Queen of People's Hearts, the way Diana would put it. All right. Okay. That's something else. And uh, he he says. Um, Apparently, I don't know if you got this right or wrong or not, but apparently you stayed at some kind of uh, some kind of fairy retreat or something. Fairy? I don't, I don't know. I think he's a bit off there because I wrote it down. Yes. And uh, apparently referred to something to do with fairies in one of your videos. So. Oh, okay. So I don't know if he's got his wires crossed there. <laughs> he may have done. No, no, I, I, I'm not sure what he's referring to, but I can talk a little bit about the fairies we are after yeah, all sure. here in Avalon. Um, Go for it. In the same way that that the cosmic uh, dimensions, right? Mm. The Earth is now merging more and more with them, and we are going to be reuniting more and more with our star family, the ones that make the star glyphs, the crop circles, what we were just talking about, right? Okay. What people might call aliens. Mm -hmm. um, prefer to call them star beings, our, our star family. So these are higher dimensions, and they're very, very real. They're just not physical, third dimensional. Okay. Okay. But in the same way we have those, we also have earthian dimensions, like mm. lower dimensions where we have the fairy realms mm. and, and oh, the, the reawakening again of the dragon power, remember? Mm -hmm. It's like um, Game of Thrones, for instance. Have you seen that series? I, I haven't, no. No, okay, that's okay then. I hear it's quite good though. It's really good. Mm. It's, it's a lot of, it's kind of symbolic because there are a lot of people wanting to be the king on the Iron Throne. Uh -huh. <laughs> a lot of claimants. Mm. And there is a, there are those who have the real legitimate claim, and and one is this this the only um, well not the only one but the a female called Daenerys and she is the mother of dragons is what they call her because mm. she has this divine power to walk through fire. She's no ordinary woman, mm. and of course I can really relate to this because as I was saying a bit earlier, the power that's in me is is just. It can't be measured. It's it's very powerful, mm. but I can be completely normal and grounded at the same time, and that's important because I want people to find their own powers, right? Okay. It's about that. Yep. So so back to the fairy realm. I wrote about how, um, in this love the real power article, for instance, mm. uh, as I was walking around um, the area where this waterfall is, uh, there are also two very very ancient rocks that are kind of like uh, figures. Uh, the story is that they were two giants fighting one another mm. and they were equally strengthed, strengthened, uh, of, of equal strength. And so they kept fighting and fighting and fighting. It would just go on and on until mm. one of them chose to surrender and then was, of course, uh, conquered. But this is the, the feminine and masculine in a sense because the one who chose to give in was the one who surrendered and that becomes a feminine movement mm. so anyway that's the story and I was walking around and then I see this guardian and it's not from this dimension mm. it was like he was sitting with a pointy hat and sort of from the side and eyeing me and I could tell that he was of one of the earthing dimensions and he was trying to see if I was true if I was there with the right intentions and he was kind of curious hmm. to see the goddess. And and I spoke telepathically with him and I said, you know, um, I thank you for all you're doing and and I promise to stay true to uh, honoring Earth and all her realms. And it's like, it sounds like a fairy tale, I know, but it's, it's very hmm. real. The other dimensions are real. And the only reason why people might not believe is because they're not experiencing it and the only reason why they're not experiencing it is because their head is telling them it's not real <laughs> so the sooner they open up to understand that there is way more between heaven and earth mm. and they start to really look at their inner worlds they yeah. will they will have the same access to these realms mm. so it could be he was referring to that and to um, I wrote there how a friend of mine actually saw a fairy over Skype, we were speaking via Skype, and he saw a fairy here 
fly up to here and and hover for a little bit just a few seconds long enough for him to see her clearly and then fly off mm. i didn't see her myself because i was looking into the camera but he could see it and the camera could pick it up mm. so i'm very dedicated to also the earthian realms and creatures just as much as i am dedicated to our star family it's all of these worlds are coming together now mm. and we've got to honor them all and respect them all so yes that's Sounds good. <laughs> it's well. It's I understand that it can sound out there. I really mm. recognize that. But it's it's basically like I said, people's experience is the only thing limiting them from from being able to see that this is very real. Mm. And I believe that people who are open and sincere and really want to learn and to grow, they will be given experiences where they will see other dimensions and experience them for themselves. Mm. Well, that sounds good. I mean, when it comes down to views like that, I mean, yeah. it does no harm, it seems to promote good. Right. And um, I, I would much rather have a conversation with someone like yourself right. than someone who's uh, like some of the other people I've mentioned, right. uh, you know, so far in this, uh, this uh, interview. So, you know, I think uh, as long as people are progressing, right. learning to, go to do good, yes. finding hope in yes. life, which is sometimes very hard. Yes, it can it's, be very hard. Yeah. If they've got a challenging life, I don't want to, to uh, belittle that in mm. any way. Mm. I just mean to say that it's also a matter of how they use their attention. And if they're going to continue to see themselves as victims, yeah. then they will stay victims. If they, if they decide, okay, I want my life to change. <laughs> it's the RIF. Ah. Yeah. A couple of... Uh, helicopters, I think. Well, okay. That's alright. That's okay. Just to finish, if people really want to change their life for the better, yeah. they themselves have the power to do so. Okay. And, and really begin by embracing themselves. Mm -hmm. Self-love is something I talk a lot about. Really start to accept and embrace the self that you are. Mm. Every being in my view, is basically good mm. and beautiful. Yeah. I really, really love people in a way I know it's hard for people to understand that even those who throw deep, dark comments at me, I mm. just feel compassion because I feel they're suffering. They're not having a good life or they wouldn't feel the need to mm. throw that kind of darkness towards me. And it just makes me sad and I really wish that they would know how loved they really are hmm. and not just by me but by lots of people in their life and by by a higher force well, yeah that's fantastic so um i'll leave that there i recommend that people uh, go across to um this lovely lady's channel <laughs> go and have a look see what uh -huh. you think and of course the the website which will be linked in the description so thank you so much we'll leave it there thank you robert feature complete well, that's great. That's just fucking great, man. Now what the fuck are we supposed to do? We're some real pretty shit now, man. You finished. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. What the fuck are we gonna do now? What are we gonna do? There are no more barriers to cross. All I have in common with the uncontrollable and the insane, the vicious and the evil, all the mayhem I have caused and my utter indifference toward it, I have now surpassed.